Hey, hi. So, uh, who do you want to get slapped by? Mm, I would like to get slapped by Maya Khalifa, of course, you know. Oh. That, kind of <laughs> that kind of slap, you know, like like the kind of continuously slapping, you know. I might, yeah, oh, I might have to Google her. Thank you for co-hosting. Where are you located? Actually, I'm located in Malaysia uh, and I was stuck in Bangkok for a long time. This is what happened, actually. <laughs> Again. <laughs> What is your book about? I heard that you are writing a book. Oh, me, my book, um, um, Rise. Uh, me, myself, I'll introduce myself a little bit first. Uh, I do grow up from the orphanage home. And so, so when I grew up from the orphanage home, when my father died um, in that orphanage, only females, I grew up with females, like uh, all the caretakers are females. By the time when I'm 21, you know, uh, I came out, my full female character inside me is fully developed. The male character inside me is still a nine-year-old boy because I've never seen a male role model uh, growing up with me. So that's the book about is taking awareness of all this, uh, what happened if you grew up in your childhood. Um, Yes. I have something similar where I feel like I stopped, my brain stopped aging. So maybe that's why I don't have a lot of sex with women. I haven't Ah. got to women yet. (laughs) I feel like my brain will... If once it matures, I'm going to t- start to go back to women because I started, I am part of the LGBTQ XYZ. <laughs> A, B, C, D, E. Okay, okay. <laughs> is the book optimistic or is it very sad? Um, yes, yeah, sad and emotional, but more like a self help book that taking awareness to all this. Uh, I'm trying to educate the children over there this is what will happen if you grow up if you don't pay if you're not aware of it it will kicks you back you know like me i don't even know how to masturbate you know <laughs> i teach how to masturbate i am i am an expert <laughs> right you know but henry uh, i do hear you uh writing a book as well like like there will be interesting yes, to hear that's from, why the book I picked from you. you i did <laughs> pick you as a co-host just so you can ask me about my book <laughs> Wow. No, we're both writing books. Yes. So I'm writing a book. It's a collection of short stories that takes place in one neighborhood in the Bronx. So I live on Tremont Avenue. So the book is called Tremont Avenue. Hey, what do you call it? So you know what that means? That I didn't really think that hard. I just looked up and said, that's the title. I didn't really work on that. You know, if you're going to make the whole street uh, three months to to a, to a what do you call this temple uh, it's going to be great is because you look like a monk actually <laughs> wife what is your dedication yeah I think I'll uh, dedicate it to uh, Mother Manglam that's the person who taught me all this uh, mind and controlling and all this stuff but uh, it still didn't work that's you know look at me now <laughs> I'm failing to control <laughs> my mind controlling my gender <laughs> Not you well. No, yeah, but anyway, well, what about you, Henry? What, 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 who are you dedicating your book to? Like, like, I would say I was in a ten-year relationship. I would dedicate it to the person in that relationship uh, who allowed me the space to write. So the dedication would be something like, "Thank you for inspiring me to write." And also breaking my heart and moving to Paris, you fucking piece of shit. Something like that. I'm not sure. I'm working on it. I might leave out the last part. I'm not sure yet. I'm working. It's a work in progress. You are probably the most interesting person to co-host this podcast ever in time. Oh, wow. Thank you for that. You well, know, like, um... Yeah, I have questions. Mm, what kind of question you, you date- have? You date boys or girls? Uh, I do date uh, girls mostly entirely. Uh, I do have a couple, uh, like two. I dated only two boys, but most most of my life I've been with female. Even I'm dating a female now. So, like generally, most cross dressers are straight, are heterosexual. Eighty percent of the cross dressers are heterosexuals. Yeah. So, right now you're a cross dresser, but you're trans. Yeah, under the category of transgender, there's three category. Remember? <laughs> yeah, oh no, I didn't. I didn't pass the test. 
<laughs> no, I was I was telling you in a joke just now, like like oh, what yes, happened yes. was yeah yeah. So, I don't listen. I didn't listen to you. I just. Oh. I just <laughs> this is what happens. This is what happens when you're talking. My head is trying to think of something to say afterwards. So I'm listening, but I'm listening with half a ear, like this tiny ear that I listen with. So I heard you say something transgender and then it was boom, 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 boom. And then I said, if you're dating a girl, here's my question. And you decide to cut it off. Is it a lesbian relationship? <laughs> yeah, I have thought that, you know, if I keep this uh, and I'm dating a girl, then it won't be a lesbian because uh, the female that I date with, they they want me to be on top of them. Like, like they want me to perform as a male. <laughs> but uh, as a, I don't know if I cut it off. First of all, I need to have the balls to remove my own balls. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, like, uh, if I do remove it, like, what, what do lesbians do? They use finger, right? I think they use their finger. I have to be very good at my finger, you know. Scissors. But, yeah. My hair is called scissors. I oh, have wow. a sister. Scissors. I have a sister who is a lesbian. Oh, I see. Wow. <laughs> so she was actually drawing me uh, little cartoon figures. <laughs> this oh. is how you do it. This is what they do. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So. Most married people already have their balls on a shelf. <laughs> <laughs> in theory, in theory, men who are married don't have balls. So there will be no penetration then. Oh, I don't know that. Uh, let, let me get this straight first. Like I'm married before I have a daughter as well. So yeah. I'm shocked to someone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, getting married, uh, no idea, but my wife wasn't my ex-wife now. It wasn't very supportive of who I am, you know. So uh, that's the reason why we got divorced. But you know, like I, I want, what do I want to say about marriage? Like, it wasn't a very nice time if you if you get into a if you get to someone who doesn't support what you're doing, and you're gonna just find way out, find a way out. That's why I find my way to you, Henry Cruz. I became a comedian, become a joker. You know, like <laughs> he's Papa Henry. He's always ah, uh, yes, I, I like Papa Henry. That's why I'm wearing <laughs> Popeye, Papa. Yeah, but what about you, Henry? Like, like what is what is it about? Like, like marriage to you? What is marriage to you? He's part of the LGBT too. I heard. <laughs> you heard non that? Mm. Non practicing. Yes. I, I am gay. yet to come out the closet. <laughs> People just look at me and they assume that I'm gay. Oh wow. Wait, this is International Comedy Rec, and let's start the show. Computers with a human-computer link will awaken and regard humanity, their creators and masters, as mentally inferior. Humanity will be destroyed by robots. And one of the things Nostradamus predicted is that AI will have an encounter this year. Uh, to me, it's like... Uh, 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 like computer gaining their consciousness like they, they are created. It's because, you know, when we when we work, you know, when we go and, and, and work, uh, let's say repairing cars, you know, we need 20 years to become good at something, you know, or something like that. You know, we want to be good at things. We keep doing it for a long time. The same thing the AI does, the AI does it as well. They learn things, but they don't die. We die, right? So they can go on for 200 years, 300 years of repairing cars. By the time 200, 300 years, they are so good at what they're doing and human is going to be replaced. So in future, our job is going to be taken over. Our, our civilization is going to be taken over. Do you know how he came up with his predictions, Nostradamus? He used the astrology chart. I'm wow. a cancer sign, so I will not date a Sagittarius. That's, how <laughs> I, that's just me. Do you, have, uh, do you believe in astrology? Uh, not so, but I believe something called destiny. That's, that's something that, that really uh, occurs to me. You know, like, like, for example, like I grew up from the orphanage home, right? So now I am lacking the male inside of me, right? When I'm dating girl, how come I've been, why am I dating mothers all this time, you know? And then when I ask it, the, the answer that I get back is, hey, you better learn how to take care of these kids and her. So you, you will start being a man if you do that. Or else you can choose another destiny to avoid this kind of thing and you will never grow. 
that's how I see it. Yeah, destiny. What's the guy's name again? Blows Aramis. What? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know him. Well, uh, for NJD, you don't know him. My goodness, like, I'm sorry, I mispronounced the name. Okay, so... you should be him, you know. No, Madamas, that's a good line. <laughs> If sorry. you don't believe in his heard, philosophy, I'm then sorry, I heard Madamas. Yes, I accidentally heard blows the Bahamas. Sorry, but sorry, but I I I I I agree. Like you know, like the prediction is true. Like everything is just taken over. Like your worst nightmare is when your ATM machines rise up. And it's already gonna rise up. Nostradamus is the best, and I think there is nobody who does best prediction than Nostradamus. <laughs> the machines will take over in five years. COVID will get 32 number of waves. Everyone in this room is getting cancelled or getting dealed. <laughs> nothing, nothing will be, nothing beneficial will happen to this room. So. <laughs> I come back in time to prevent this happening. <laughs> And if anybody protests, they're getting cancelled. Will I finish my book? No, <laughs> not that. I believe Nostradamus was just a ripoff of this guy named. <laughs> 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 well, say the line again. Say the line again. Say, say the line again. Yeah, I like that. Say the line again. I believe Nostradamus was just a ripoff of this guy named Walter Mercado. He was a big guy in Spanish culture. He was the real deal. This guy just stole his act, made millions off him. You know how they do to us. You, you know I Henry, do. I know do Walter. I, Walter is on my TV screen a lot. He's like kind of. He looks like very Steve girly Jobs. though. He's he's turning into he's transitioning. I think. Walter. Kind of kind of like Steve Jobs ripping off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, we should worry so much. Uh, AI is, as comedians, we know what AI is. It's audience interaction. Very true. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> there's, 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 there's nothing to be scared of. <laughs> just make sure you've, make sure you've uh, seen a copy of the uh, every member of the audience's um, resume first. <laughs> I got a book coming out. Oh wow! It's called, um, <laughs> you know, I, you guys got a book. I also got a book. Um, it's called uh, "Bald Guys Make Great Love," um, and I dedicate it to me. So you know, oh, wow. look out for that one. Uh, I want, I want to, I want to make a counter proposal that my book's releasing after his book. It's where a fat guy enjoys bald guys after making uh, love, type of situation, <laughs> inspired by Esteban. So it's 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 like a week later after his book release. So you said Esteban so much in your set. I was thought like, oh my god, there's a yeah. lot. Of What I the feel like naming my kid Esteban. That would be crazy. It's a good Imagine name that. though. Anybody else have a book coming out since we're doing book? <laughs> Think of Harry Potter being written by AI. Like Voldemort uses the gun of Azkaban. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make Harry sense. Potter was always written by AI. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you seen- J.K. Rowling? I like that J.K. Have you seen? I liked J- her when she was J, not K. <laughs> More people die from eating too much than from eating too little. My job. More people die of old age than from infectious diseases. And more people commit suicide than are killed by soldiers. Sugar is now more dangerous than violence. With each passing year, doctors get smarter. To have us extend our life and possibly overcome death itself, medicine will need to evolve and be able to re-engineer the structures and processes of our body and learn to regenerate organs. We grant our smartphone a bit more control over our lives. Having a virtual presence and assistant in your pocket, or try a new and more effective antidepressant drug, in pursuit of health, happiness, and power. Humans will gradually change first one of their features and then another until, looking back, they will no longer, in essence, be human. Once stem cell research enables us to create an unlimited supply of human embryos on the cheap, you can select your optimal baby from among hundreds of candidates, all carrying your DNA, all perfectly natural, and none requiring any futuristic genetic engineering. Wouldn't that be handy if you wanted your child to be immune to certain diseases or have an exceptional memory? 
and if the government forbids all citizens from engineering their babies, but one country keeps doing it and they keep producing geniuses, artists and athletes that far outperform ours. How could we possibly stop this then? We're going to become human gods? Do you want to be a god? I, I don't know what it's enlightenment to you, actually. Could you, could you explain a little bit of enlightenment? Then I enlightenment get the Enlightenment to me is that I'm better than you. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, enlightenment is actually, I know, I, it's a better answer. Is when I say enlightenment is that I am um, trying to change the world in a better way. Leave it to, for, uh, embrace mother nature, lick her vagina, and just have a better planet a better world for my future children that i will never have something like that yeah. wow like like to me enlightenment means actually you become very detached from the physical world like like for example at russia attacking my country i won't fight and defend it i just just go with the flow like if russian take over i'm russian then <laughs> oh you want to label me as, as ukraine i'm ukraine <laughs> say, some, say something no, like let me hear you say something Russian. I can't though. Like, like, Sarut sounds Sarut sounds like a Russian when he Russian. was doing the cancer call. Like, this thing is just fear of that. You no know, people are fear, fear of that using this technology to aid us into having a longevity that give powers to AI. You know, so like China, I don't know, I don't know China whether they're really doing it or not, because when I see their army, I think they're already using stem cell to 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 get designer babies. I want the Gucci baby. Yeah. I don't want it to look like me, just the good parts. Like I'm, I don't want him to have disease. So now we have all of this great uh, technology. What do we do with it? We create a race that's better than us. That's then the rest of the humans become so small. They're like cockroaches that we can step on. And eat. <laughs> we can food. That's the cycle of life, and that's a part of my enlightenment package. Nice. Our video um, used the horrible, horrible phrase "optimal baby." Now, that, that, that's horrible because a baby is supposed to be a surprise, like right. the punchline of a joke. Girl, <laughs> 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 sugar is more dangerous than violence. Right. But shit. So the best thing I can do is to uh, uh, is to go to Ukraine with a whole batch of uh, chocolate bars and give it to Russian soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would refrain from um, having one of those, you know, computer generated kids. Uh, if I if I watch my movies correctly, I know that uh, most computer ge generated kids have um, like an off switch. Or some type right. of motherboard that you use to shut them down. Right. Um, you know, I call it old fashioned, but if you want to shut down my kid, I just prefer you shoot him. I mean, I would say if when it comes to first of all, even when it comes to if I'm supposed to have a baby, there is no fucking way I'm letting it look like me. All right, there's no way. <laughs> There's no way my kid is going to look like me. It's going to look a bit like Tom Cruise with the pinch of, you know, uh, you know, Kevin, Kevin Hart's ass, you know, with the, with the, with, <laughs> with the, with the drip of, with, uh, with the drip of, you know, uh, Mia Khalifa's uh, sexy body, you know, like uh -huh. a, like a combination. There's no fucking way I'm putting my genetics. It's, it's, that's the idea of custom building it. <laughs> Have you considered that we already genetically modify our children when we're um, <laughs> looking for potential mates? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a, that's a really interesting. Yeah. That's true as well. Yeah. These days we hear the people saying body positivity is a man, body positivity, body positivity, and I'm like, you know, you love your body. I mean, come on, guys. Like, if you're fat, just accept it. You're gonna die. Like, yeah. there is a limit to being fat. And there's a limit to being, there's a limit between fat and obesity. Like right. fat, yes, you, you can stay fat, you can be healthy, that's great. Once you go over the limit of obesity, there's no coming back. You're going to die of heart disease, dude. I, agree with I want to cancel Kyle Cop for canceling, saying that obesity is bad. Or body shaming, body shaming, body shamers. But I'm being 
fat and obesity, and then you're going to die. Same like getting into dating and serious relationship and then divorce, you know, <laughs> it's like, so you just need to know when to stop. So I suggest you just, you know, enjoy the process and, you know, that's it. Just don't look for the consequences. That's it. <laughs> I think it's like uh, like body shame and uh, kind of build character. I, I feel like uh, between being called fat and uh, immigrant jokes growing up, it, it made me the person who I am. It made me funny. You know, I had to learn to think. Uh, I had to think to say things back. You know what I mean? And and just kind of build a muscle. True, true. Um, yeah. And I don't think I could stop uh, fat shaming, even if I tried. So. <laughs> it's, it's more inevitable. like fat shaming moved from the outside public now it's inside inside my head i see someone who's not eating right i'm fat shaming them but i'm not going to do it in public lizzo is the one that i was talking about lizzo uh, the music artist she's on there in her thong on tiktok saying yeah look at me look at me i got big tetas that's uh, spanish I want to say is like when this microchip gathers enough information about us, right? Soon we're going to combine with them. That's the uh, the, the the book called Homo Deus. We're going to evolve it to that one. The superhuman, yeah. Uh, all your emotions can be turned into algorithms. So if you dated somebody for ten years and you just have that that same rhythm, is a computer thing. So AI can do love better than us, pretty much. I like okay. I like puta because now when I talk about Putin, I'm like, you know the Putin puta? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know I know the translation for puta, by the way. I know what puta, puta is what? Go ahead, tell me. Don't say my mother. <laughs> no. <laughs> based on based on my intel, I don't know if it's true, but puta means the B word. You cancelled. Hasta la mume le benchot. Like you know what I was saying before. Twenty in the front, two hundred in the back. Puta is that's a puta. Our mindset may even change our hormonal response to food. In the early 2010s, Alia Kram, a health psychologist at Stanford University gave participants two milkshakes on different days. Much like the test with the chocolate bars, the nutritional contents of the milkshakes were the same, but the participants saw different labels each time. One label described the shake as indulgent, rich and delicious. Rich and delicious. The pineal gland fires a couple of hormones into our body uh, when we're doing something like, like four happy hormones. It's called D-O-S-E. Dolphamine, oxytocin, serotonin and ecstasy pill. True. I'm missing the dopamine. Uh-huh. I like dopamine uh-huh. hits. Like, oh, 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 too much pleasure. Uh-huh. This is me when I get dopamine. <gasps> yeah, so eating, part of eating, uh, when you eat, having a good meal, the dopamine really fires in a lot into your body. That's why you see, when, you, when you're eating, you don't feel that you're full, okay? And only after eating, you feel like, oh, I ate too much. Just a little switch on that mental mindset can take you from being Lizzo to Taylor Swift. I'm t- I don't know if that's canceled, but <laughs> that might be. Why? That's why Western Western style has a, has a very good he- eating habit. So it's when they pick up some meat and then they drink the wine. Okay. By the time they haven't finished it, they know they're full. You know, so they're not going to go further. Not a single person in that video was happy. Like the girl, when she <laughs> took the thing from the shelf, I was zoomed in on her fucking face. <laughs> You know, the disappointment level she's got on her face. That's the problem is that we don't, oh, I went on a date and someone said, oh my God, this, this chicken empanada is orgasmic. I'm like, no, it's not. It's dead meat. You should only enjoy sex with dead meat. Um, I won't leave that. I won't finish that. <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's like saying, don't just eat your meat, beat it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Americans eat cheeseburgers. Americans eat uh, yeah. burgers. They eat this much yeah. of cheese, this much of meat. Like meat is their national diet or something. They eat yeah. this much, and they have the audacity. They have the audacity <laughs> to ask for a diet coke. Now, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you trying to do? You you try, you you trying to eat eat somebody's mom and ask for uh being healthy? <laughs> Doesn't work that way. <laughs> I think a, a a burger for Americans is a tasty treat. If you think broccoli is heaven in a bottle, no. change your brain and convince yourself every morning you chew it like it's cardboard, and then eventually, thirty days later, like most Stockholm syndrome, you're like, "Oh my god, I love this! I love my torturer." No, no. <laughs> quickest way to be healthy. Don't have fat people around you. That's it. What? Oh yeah, fat <laughs> people make me look hotter. <laughs> Podcast. Yeah. Eat it. Just eat it. <laughs> eat it. Just eat it. <laughs> Just eat it. <laughs> Go get yourself an egg and beat it. Have some chicken and pie. It doesn't matter, boil, boiled or fried. Just eat it. Just eat it. <laughs> have some banana or your. Have some yeah, yogurt or some bad. spam, fresh or canned. <laughs> doesn't matter. Just eat it. Just eat it. That's it. That's all I got. Uh, well, no, I thought you were doing a concert. Ooh. Eat it after you beat it. <laughs> Serene. So here's what I think. I want to work on my makeup. Do you have any makeup tips for me? Because I'm, you know, I want to go out in public. Feminine makeup, right? To turn you into female, right? Because there are male who do makeup. It's just for photo shooting and all stuff. It's kind of anti-aging. So when I'm on camera, I want to be like all white, like a geisha girl, bald monk. Oh, yeah. I see that one. I, I don't suggest you doing that. It's because you don't look like geisha. You turn out looking <laughs> like Mulan. Yeah, he he will turn out looking like Mulan. Yeah. Goal! <laughs> Mulan in reverse. Yes, I'll be uh, the Mulan. one sneaking in. To the Mulan as a girl, and then people will think, "Oh, he looks like such a good girl." All right, thank you, everybody. That ends this podcast on a good note. Thank you. Wait, let me stop. Are we recording? <laughs> <laughs>